Hello, welcome to video V2D. In this lecture, I'll describe the Fujisaki Okamoto transform, which is a generic method for converting a public key encryption scheme that is secure against chosen plain text attacks into one that is also secure against chosen ciphertext attacks. I'll show how the Fujisaki Okamoto transform was used to convert the Kyber public key encryption scheme into the Kyber chem that is secure against chosen ciphertext attacks. Lastly, I'll describe the Kyber chem parameter sets in FIPS 203. And I'll summarize the Kyber details that I omitted in this chapter. A key encapsulation mechanism, or chem, is a key establishment protocol that allows two parties to establish a shared secret key. A chem is comprised of three algorithms. A key generation algorithm that Alice uses to generate an encapsulation key and a corresponding decapsulation key. The encapsulation key is Alice's public key, whereas the decapsulation key is her private key. Bob uses the encapsulation algorithm to generate a secret key and ciphertext using Alice's encapsulation key. He sends the ciphertext to Alice. Alice uses the decapsulation algorithm with her decapsulation key to recover the secret key from the ciphertext. The Kyber chem is derived by applying the so-called Fujisaki Okamoto transform to the Kyber public key encryption scheme. The Fuji Okamoto transform is a generic method for converting a public key encryption scheme that is secure against chosen plaintext attacks to one that is secure against chosen ciphertext attacks. For a public key encryption scheme, resistance to chosen ciphertext attacks is a stronger notion of security than resistance to chosen plaintext attacks. The transform uses three hash functions, G, H, and J. The Kyber public key encryption scheme is used to encrypt a randomly selected bit string M of length 256. Encapsulation uses de-randomization, whereby M and the encapsulation key EK are hashed to produce the random seed R and the secret key K. The random polynomials R, E1, and E2 needed for encryption are derived from R. This process converts the randomized encryption scheme into a deterministic one. In decapsulation, the intended recipient decrypts the Kyber PKE ciphertext C to recover M primed, and then hashes M primed and the encapsulation key EK to obtain R primed and K primed. She then re-encrypts M primed using R primed and compares the resulting ciphertext C primed with C. If the encryption was done correctly, then M primed will equal M and hence R prime equals R and K prime equals K. Thus, the re-encryption of M will produce the ciphertext C. And this reproducibility of C is why a deterministic encryption scheme is needed. On the other hand, if the encryption was not done correctly, then it turns out that with high probability, the ciphertext C primed that the recipient Alice computes will not be equal to C. If C primed equals C, she accepts K primed as a secret key. Otherwise, she outputs a random key K bar obtained by hashing C and another secret Z. Kyber chem has plain text awareness. This means that decapsulation will produce K and not K bar provided that the entity who performed the encapsulation already knows K. This provides resistance to chosen ciphertext attacks, since the adversary will not be able to learn anything useful 
by presenting a ciphertext to Alice for decryption. Either the adversary already knew the plaintext, so the adversary will not learn anything new when Alice returns that plaintext, or the adversary didn't already know the plaintext, in which case Alice will almost certainly return a key K bar that was randomly generated by Alice. So again, the adversary doesn't learn any useful information. Here is key generation for Kyber Chem. Alice selects an encryption key row T and decryption key S for the Kyber public key encryption scheme. She then selects a random bit string Z. Alice's encapsulation key is EK comprised of row and T. Her decapsulation key is DK, which is comprised of S, EK, the hash of EK, and Z. To establish a shared secret key with Alice, Bob does the following. He selects a random bit string M of bit length 256. Bob then computes the hash H of the encapsulation key and hashes M and H to get the bit strings K and R, each of bit length 256. Bob uses the Kyber PKE encryption algorithm to encrypt M with encryption key EK, yielding ciphertext C. He uses the bit string R to generate the random quantities needed for encryption. To recover the secret key K from ciphertext C, Alice uses her decapsulation key as follows. First, she uses the Kyber PKE decryption algorithm and her decryption key S to decrypt C. She obtains the plain text M primed. She then hashes M primed and the hash of EK to obtain 256 bit strings K primed and R primed. She hashes her secret Z and the ciphertext C to obtain K bar. Next, she uses the Kyber PKE encryption algorithm to encrypt M primed, obtaining the ciphertext C primed. Here, she uses the bit string R primed to generate the random quantities needed for encryption. If C is not equal to C primed, she returns K bar. Otherwise, she outputs K primed as the secret key. Decapsulation fails when C is not equal to C primed, whereby the key K bar that is outputted is different from the key K that was encapsulated. Decapsulation failure can occur even if the communicating parties, Alice and Bob, behave honestly. This is because there is a chance, although a very small one, that there is a failure in the underlying Kyber public key encryption scheme whereby the M prime that is recovered is not equal to M. It can be shown, although I won't do that here, that the decapsulation failure rate is negligible. Kyber chem is indistinguishable against chosen ciphertext attacks, assuming that the decisional module learning with errors problem is intractable, and that G, H, and J are modeled as random functions. Kyber chem is also indistinguishable against chosen ciphertext attacks by a quantum adversary who is able to make both classical queries and quantum queries in superposition to G, H, and J. FIPS 203 specifies three parameter sets for Kyber. These parameter sets are ML Chem 512, ML Chem 768, and ML Chem 1024. The parameter sets are intended to provide at least as much security as 128 bit AES, 192 bit AES, and 256 bit AES, respectively. I've listed here the encapsulation key sizes and the ciphertext sizes. I've also listed 
the upper bounds on decapsulation failure probability from FIPS 203. As you can see, the failure rates are negligible. In my description of Kyber, I omitted some details. You can find them in the FIPS 203 document. FIPS 203 prescribes the formatting of bit strings and byte strings. Shake is an extendable output hash function specified in FIPS 202. The hash functions G, H, and J are defined from SHA-3 and Shake-256. Shake-128 is employed to define an extendable output function that is used to generate the matrix A in NTT form from the secret seed row. Shake-256 is used to define a pseudorandom function which in turn is used to generate the coefficients of polynomials in S, E, R, E1, and E2. The number theoretic transform is used for fast polynomial multiplication in RQ. The Kyber NTT will be described in V4B. The primary references I used for the Kyber videos are first, the research paper that introduced Kyber. This paper was published in the Proceedings of the 2018 IEEE European Symposium on Security and Privacy. Second, the Kyber specification that was submitted to NIST. You can find this document on the Crystal's Kyber webpage, which also includes links to software and other resources. And of course, I used the recently published NIST standard FIPS 203. The design of Kyber was influenced by the works of many cryptographers in the past three decades. You can trace back the main contributions from the references in these three sources.